Welcome, Ignite attendees. My name is Anthony Kerr. I am a senior business strategy manager in the Worldwide Learning Organization, and you are at our intro to M3, our Microsoft 365. Uh, we have here today Darren Hansen. He is on our technical content lead, or he is on our technical content team. Uh, Darren, take it away. Thanks, Anthony. As you mentioned, I'm on the worldwide learning team, uh, specifically the Microsoft 365 technical content team, uh, and I own the track for the Microsoft 365 fundamentals certification. Uh, so today we'll be getting into, you know, generally what is Microsoft 365? You may have heard of Microsoft 365 before. You may have heard of Office 365 before. Um, we'll try to you know, give you an idea of what, what's in Microsoft 365 and all you can do with it. We'll talk about kind of what careers you want to go into, um, what careers are available with Microsoft 365 technologies, or just general roles, uh, role-based uh, paths you can go down to, to learn about more of the Microsoft technologies. We'll talk about how Microsoft 365 is built. We won't get down into the weeds, but we'll just talk about some of the principles that we adhere to uh, in regards to security, privacy, and compliance. And then we'll uh, give you some resources where you can learn more about Microsoft 365. Uh, and then we've got a quick Q&A at the end. So what is Microsoft 365? Um, a lot of people probably generally know what Microsoft is. They know what Windows is. They know what Office is. Uh, you may have even heard of Office 365, which is, uh, you know, a, a, the first iteration of our, our cloud service, basically. Um, you know, you probably heard of email or Exchange or Outlook. Um, that's one thing that we provide, but there's a lot of other stuff that we provide for not only you know employees that are working on um, projects, but also the businesses and their their IT teams and their um, security teams. We we provide tools for them to make their job easier. So Microsoft 365 is all about productivity. It's about personal productivity, getting your job done, making you more productive, making your day a little bit easier, and then organizational productivity, making the business more productive, making uh, things easier, making things cost less, making things take less time. So on the personal productivity side, we generally want to allow people to work better as a team together and simplify that whole process. It's it's not very fun if you have to run down the hall to talk to this person and then run down the hall to talk to that person. We want teams to be able to collaborate, meet, call, and connect easily all in one place, and we have Microsoft Teams for that. We want people to stay productive on the go, especially now with remote work being so common. We want Office to be accessible from everywhere, whether that's on their, their mobile phone or at home or in a coffee shop. And then the tools that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, we want to be smarter. We want AI-enabled tools that uh, help you be more creative, that help you learn from the content that you're working on or the data that you're working with. We want search to be better and more uh, personable. We want personalized assistance with built-in intelligent features. That basically means, you know, AI-enabled tools telling you how to make your content or your, your project a little bit better. For organizations, the way that organizations are more productive is uh, managing all of that knowledge that sits in all of the employees' heads, you know, turning that into um, a an ecosystem where experts can rely on one another to uh, learn from each other. Uh, another place that we do that is through workplace analytics that looks at a bunch of different signals in Microsoft 365 and suggests ways to help teams work better together. For IT teams and IT administrators, uh, we have tools that making that make uh, managing all your computers, mobile phones, tablets, devices a lot easier. And we have Microsoft Endpoint Manager for that, managing all those things in one place as opposed to managing all those things in different tools uh, on different systems. And then lastly, if you don't have a secure organization, if your data is not secure, if your um, network is not secure, then you can't really be productive if you're trying to, to uh, you know, fill holes all the time. So we provide tools to help you protect your business and mitigate risk. So 
to that end for organizational productivity and personal productivity, we have, you know, these are more broken down features um, that we have available in Microsoft 365. We've got, you know, instant messaging and meetings through Teams, email and calendaring through Outlook and Exchange, Office, of course, uh, file storage and sharing with OneDrive and business, and then um, intranet team sites, collaboration sites, communication sites uh, through SharePoint and Yammer. Like I mentioned for the business management or the organizational productivity side, we've simplified IT management with the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, we uh, have better workflow management and process automation through Power Automate and SharePoint. Um, and then through Microsoft Teams and the Power Platform, which we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, you can basically extend your line of business applications through those other tools. Uh, we provide tools for workflow and forms management, business intelligence uh, with Power BI. Those are things like you know creating graphs, creating charts out of data easily, uh, and then ways to manage your work better through Planner or you may have known that as Project. Uh, and then a whole range of security and compliance capabilities uh, having to do with protecting people's identities and protecting access to the resources that you have on your network and then protecting from outside threats you know denial of service attacks malware phishing uh, we provide tools to help employees protect themselves and help the business protect themselves as well uh, for microsoft 365 there's four ways to uh, sign up for it or there's there's four subscription bases that we have for 365 uh, and that's enterprise for large businesses with thousands uh, tens of thousands of employees we have subscriptions for small business for up to 300 employees uh, if you are have been in any college institution or higher education you may have used microsoft 365 for education there and then for our home users, uh, there, there is a Microsoft 365 subscription for home users uh, and family that basically just includes Office and a few of the cloud services like uh, Exchange and Teams. So now that we've talked about kind of what generally what's in Microsoft 365 and what you can do with it, um, where can you go with Microsoft 365? What types of careers or jobs are available? And you know, not there are many more jobs available than than what we're talking about here. But um, when you work with Microsoft 365 technologies and use Microsoft 365 to its fullest extent, these are the types of jobs, job roles that are available, uh, and these are the types of roles that we're targeting on Microsoft Learn. Uh, so we have developers, data engineers, DevOps engineers, which are people who manage uh, our Azure DevOps instances. Um, administrators, you know, IT administrators, Teams administrators, um, SharePoint administrators. There's multiple different types of administrators that we work with or that uh, can can work with Microsoft 365. Data scientists with all the data that we collect and uh, being able to manipulate it and visualize it through Power BI. Uh, security engineers, like I mentioned, uh, Microsoft 365 is investing hugely in security and so there's going to be a great need for security engineers in the future solutions architects you know um, they, they look at everything from the top down and try to build solutions out of all the tools that are available ai engineers and functional consultants those are you know just some of the roles and careers that are available those are the ones that we look at at microsoft learn and try to target uh, with learning paths and certifications so there are three levels of certifications. Uh, we start with Microsoft 365 Fundamentals, which is kind of what we're talking about here. Um, once you get past the fundamentals, there's more role-based certifications available depending on which area you want to get into. So there's a Teamwork Administrator Associate, which I mentioned works with Teams. There is a Modern Desktop Administrator Associate, a Messaging Administrator Associate, a Developer Associate, security administrator associate and then a teams another teams administrator associate lastly if you kind of bring all of those together um, and become an expert in sort of being an enterprise administrator there's the expert administrator certification 
So those are the ones for Microsoft 365. There are certainly more available for Azure and uh, other technologies at Microsoft 365. Uh, but now we're going to get into a little bit more detail on some of the specifics of what what can Microsoft 365 actually do. So we talked about personal productivity and organizational productivity. And for personal productivity, the ways that that Microsoft 365 empowers employees to be more productive is through uh, one way is through engagement and that's basically making employees feel connected to the business and the projects that they're working on uh, we want employees to be feel like they have a voice in their in their organization uh, feel like they they have a say in what's going on and how things run or just feeling like they're informed uh, from uh, feeling like they're informed from the leadership at the company. So we provide tools like Yammer, uh, Microsoft Teams Live Events to help CEOs um, and leadership at their company connect with their employees. Uh, I mentioned one way to help employees be more productive is through communicating with uh, you know, their other employees uh, through Microsoft Teams. You can you know, IM and chat and host online meetings uh, with you know, rich video content and um, desktop sharing capabilities. Another way, obviously, is uh, email and calendaring. That's not going anywhere. We still offer Outlook and calendaring services through Exchange. Um, even though we have different ways of communicating now, email is, is not going anywhere and it's, it's going to stay for many years to come. Uh, being productive from anywhere, again, having Office on all your devices, being able to store and share your files uh, from anywhere. Uh, that's part of OneDrive capabilities. And then empowering everyone with all of these tools means not just empowering um, your employees, but empowering those who uh, have different accessibility needs. So all of our Microsoft products are built um, with accessibility in mind, and they meet our seven accessibility principles that, that we uh, adhere to when building our products to make sure that, that everybody is uh, empowered to do the best work that they can. So organizations um, have a little bit different way of being productive. Um, it's not about the individual anymore. It's about what can the business do to be more productive, to save money, to um, save costs. And part of that is simplified management. Like I mentioned before, when you have to manage um, multiple thousands of devices, whether they're Windows computers or Mac computers or Android phones or, or Apple phones, or maybe even some Windows phones still. Um, it's hard to do that when you have to manage them all from different separate uh, tools and sources. But with Microsoft Endpoint Manager, we've brought all those together so you can now dictate um, minimum operating system requirements. Um, you can make sure that everybody has the most uh, the latest security patches installed. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to access corporate resources or anything. Um, business process automation through um, through Power Automate and Flow. Uh, also through SharePoint. Basically, if you have a complicated business process uh, that you know is not very uh, efficient, it's kind of complicated. People get confused by it. Microsoft 365 has many tools available to help you streamline that business process. Uh, again, through extensibility through Microsoft Teams and Power Platform, uh, employees can create their own apps uh, that connect to corporate data and corporate um, corporate resources. They can create those apps without the need for, say, a developer or a complicated development process. Uh, forms and workflow management I mentioned before, business intelligence through Power BI uh, and work management through uh, Microsoft Planner. So we also have this tool called Workplace Analytics that kind of looks at multiple signals all around your organization from employees working from how their devices are connecting, uh, where they're connecting from. All those kind of things will feed into Workplace Analytics and sort of suggest or um, make a report on how your employees or how your organization works together, their collaboration patterns that impact productivity, uh, their effectiveness as a workforce, and whether or not they're engaged. So 
workplace analytics can look at all that and suggest ways to make all that better. And it's using AI in the back end, in the back end to uh, create those insights and actionable behaviors. Uh, Microsoft Secure Score is another tool that uh, we offer for businesses that gives a really easy way to look at your security posture in your whole organization. It's, it's one score that looks at multiple different things across your business, and it says, these are the places we feel you are vulnerable, and here's, a, here's an action plan on how to adjust. And so as you make these improvements, your score continually goes up. Um, and it's just a it's a nice, simple way for businesses to make sure that you know they're not being taken advantage of or or they're not suffering any malicious attacks. So getting into security and talking about how secure Microsoft is, um, we'll start with kind of how Microsoft 365 is built. Um, a lot of vendors out there, um, security vendors have one tool that is built for a specific threat or a specific um, aspect of security. And so a lot of companies end up with 10, 20, you know, different security products in their organization. Um, and Microsoft is trying to position itself as a, you know, an all up security provider. And so uh, we think of security from the ground up and it's it's underpinned across every product and every service that we that we build and we use AI and automation to make sure that uh, we're looking at signals, thousands and thousands of signals, actually uh, trillions of signals across you know, the entire net uh, to look at malicious attacks, to correlate you know, where attacks are happening and trying to prevent them from, from happening to your network. Uh, it's integrated across, you know, there's security for people, your identity, the devices that you work on, the apps that you're actually working with on those devices, and then the data that you're accessing is actually secure. So at each level of uh, access, there is uh, another barrier to getting access to that. And it sounds sounds complicated and it sounds cumbersome, but it's actually a very streamlined process that is thought of from the beginning and built into all of our products. Um, so those three aspects of security are generally uh, identity and access management, you know, protecting you, your, your identity, your logon credentials, protecting the, the access or the, the place that you're trying to get access to the data or the website or the app, um, protecting from outside threats like malware, phishing, uh, denial of service attacks, and then general cloud security. So for compliance, uh, we provide you know, some services and tools that help protect the information that you're working with um, and governing that data, making sure that the, the people who are supposed to have access to that data only have access to that data and no one else. So being able to perform audits on things like that, making sure that uh, you are thinking about insider risk management uh, we have tools to you know, prevent either intentional or unintentional leakage of data from inside your organization. Um, abilities to discover and respond to uh, compliance requests from government uh, regulator, regulatory bodies um, and other, other services for legal issues or uh, things like that. Uh, so we have tools to provide all of that for organizations. Um, and then one thing that Microsoft is thinking very heavily of going forward is, is privacy uh, of our data, of your data, and how that is going to affect everybody in the future. So protecting your personal data requires you know, security and it requires access control management and proper data classification. And that's kind of what we talked about uh, in, in terms of compliance. Uh, but privacy is also about being accountable for and respecting our customers' choices. So it's about being able to control the collection of the data, uh, what we do with that data, who has access to that data, and distribute uh, distribution of that data. You know who who we sell it to and all that. So we try to follow the the you know six privacy principles uh, of control, transparency, security, strong legal protections, no content based targeting, and that turns out to be a benefit to you. So 
lastly, yeah, I think Anthony is going to talk about some resources that we have to to keep learning about Microsoft 365. So, Anthony. Yeah. So uh, before we get to the resources, I'm going to ask a, a couple of questions for Darren. Um, since this is uh, we're now in September of 2020, how was the uh, global pandemic shifted the landscape of personal and organizational productivity? Um, it certainly makes it a lot more difficult for organizations to um, manage a business, you know, from home and manage all the employees that are involved in the business from their homes. Um, so with cloud technologies, it actually makes it really easily because, you know, everybody has a, a work or company laptop or device um, and it makes it very easy for IT teams to manage that device wherever it is. It doesn't have to be on a corporate network or anything like that. So it's changing in, in that regard, but with Microsoft 365, it actually makes it very easy um, for individuals and personal productivity. Um, you know, we have the tools available to make remote learning and remote work uh, very easy. Uh, it, it's definitely a, a paradigm shift, but you know, we have had in the past tools to make this uh, work and we definitely have it now with Teams. So, and speaking of the IT department, what roles are most in demand right now? I would say probably security administrators, security engineers, um, as everything moves more to the cloud and things become a little bit more uncertain in the, um, you know, in the global economy or whatever. Um, security is, is at the, the forefront of our um, of our investments. And so security engineers, also developers, um, as more people move to the cloud and kind of move away from line of business applications on premises, we need developers to start taking the reins and connecting their line of business applications to Microsoft 365 and building, building that ecosystem um, and learning Absolutely. that ecosystem. Absolutely. So let's say one of our viewers uh, dreams of becoming an enterprise admin. What hard skills should they pursue to to be successful in this endeavor? Um, pretty much for for anybody who's looking into getting into an administrator role um, or any kind of IT or tech role, it's really that drive to solve problems. Um, if you don't have uh, the ability or the the want the need to solve a problem when you see one, um, you, you probably won't go far because being an administrator is, is all about looking for the problems in your organization, you know, finding ways to improve and then using the tools and resources available to you to solve those problems. And Microsoft 365 provides a lot of different tools and each company uses them a little bit different. Each company has a different way of solving that problem. And, you know, we need unique problem solvers to use our tools to you know, create new ways of, of working. And what about developers who work on M365? Would you say it's the same or similar skill set? It's, it's similar, but you also have to have the, um, at Microsoft we say you want to be a know or you want to be a learn it all, not a know it all. You have to have that drive to keep learning things. And um, throughout your career as a developer, there's nobody who's going to be a successful developer who learns one language, one technology, and sticks with it their entire career. They're always going to be learning something new. So Microsoft 365, you know, has a lot of different technologies that it touches, and you can, you know, you can get involved in, in any one of them and learn something new every day. And, and speaking of uh, languages for developers, are there any, or where should they start? What, what would be the uh, if you had to learn one or two languages, what would those one or two languages be? Uh, definitely C Sharp to start with, um, but you know a lot of our technologies are you can use other languages with them. Um, so, but C Sharp is probably the one to start with, and we do have a learning path and a certification available for Microsoft 365 developers. So, I would definitely suggest checking that out. And would you have any, let's say, uh, 
guidance or wisdom that you've acquired through your career that you would uh, leave for our audience who's just getting started into set? Uh, it, it definitely goes back to what I said earlier about learn it all, not know it all, because uh, Microsoft is continually changing um, the whole, all our competitors are continually changing too. And so as, as the world changes, as technology changes, you have to keep up with that and, uh, you know, try to learn something new every, every day, if not, you know, <laughs> if not more often. Absolutely. Thank you for your, your presentation, Darren. Uh, and before we sign off, uh, we'd like to tell you about these resources. So uh, first we have the M365 uh, learning path. And second, we have the M365 fundamentals certification details. Uh, so with the learning paths, you will get more in-depth knowledge uh, of what Darren uh, just spent uh, the last 20 minutes or so uh, presenting. And then if you want to prove or validate that you've uh, learned uh, enough about Microsoft 365 fundamentals to, uh, to go further, I would highly recommend pursuing the certification, uh, which is the aka.ms. Uh, slash M365 certification link. And also, before we let you go, I want to talk to you about the Cloud Skills Challenge. Uh, so this is an opportunity to earn a free certification exam uh, by completing uh, our Microsoft 365 Cloud Skills Challenge. Uh, so join today in the learning zone. Uh, you see the link right on your screen. And with that, uh, have a wonderful Ignite.